to God, we bow down and worship Yahweh. New every morning is thy love, Lord. Our waking and uprising prove through sleep and darkness safely brought, restored to life and power and thought. Now more than ever, we know what a privilege it is to be blessed with another day. And that day is today, Sunday, August 9, 2020. Let us give God the glory. The Lord inhabits the praise of his people. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am Sonia Thompson. And today, my husband, Deacon Thompson, and I have been kindly invited by Reverend Dr. Floyd Antonio and his wife, Rosie, to fellowship with you. And so today we're looking forward to a time of praise in the Lord as we lift our voices and our hearts to Him. We submit ourselves as vessels for the Lord to use as He wills to be a blessing to someone today. We will now have a, the opening prayer which will be done by Sister Bernice Seymour. Father, I stretch my hands to thee, no other help I know. If thou wouldst draw thyself from me, to whom shall I go? This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to come together, O oh God, together around your word. To let the world know that we serve a risen Savior who is in the world today. Thank you for waking us up from our sleep, O oh God, and allowing us, O oh Father God, to come together, O oh Father, where we can sharpen each other, O oh Father God, and strengthen each other to be strong in you, O oh God. Lord, as we look around us, O oh Father God, the world seems to be falling apart. But we are so glad to know our anger holds in the one true and living God. That our faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. That we are covered under the almighty wings of the mighty God, yes. our, love, our loving and everlasting Father. Father God, this morning we, we are so grateful, oh Father God, that we are able to be where we are, oh God, because Father, so many things have happened since last Sunday to this moment. God, there have been so many families that are hurting. But this morning we ask, oh Father God, that you will just come for them as you alone can, for you are the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent one. Yes. You know what we do not know, you see what we do not see, and you can be where we cannot be. Thank you, Lord. But Father God, for wherever we are, we ask, oh Father God, that you will use us, oh God, that you will allow us to be your hands and your feet, oh God, that you will allow us to be salt and light, oh God, that we can bring hope to this dying world. Yes. Father God, it seems as if we will return, we hear of COVID-19. But we're so glad to know that before COVID-19, you were. Yes. During COVID-19, you are. Hallelujah. And after COVID-19, you will be. Yes. We thank you for the platform, oh God, that COVID-19 has given us, oh Father God, that we can use it, oh Father, to help others understand who we are, why we are so happy, why we are so joyful, why we are not fearful, that we can let them know we serve a God who never sleeps, a God who never slumbers, a God who loves us, a God who provides, a God who, who, who cares, a God who is the most almighty, our everlasting loving Father. And that we have no need to fear because we know that your word says that we will always be covered under your wing, yes. that we will always be sheltered. Thank you, Lord. Oh God, our hope is in thee, oh God. Yes, you are everything. Yes, Lord. And we're so grateful, oh Father God, to oh. know that we can depend on you. I pray, oh Father God, that as your word goes out today, oh God, that hearts would be blessed. I pray, oh Father God, that the atmosphere will be saturated with your anointing, oh Father. 
that those who hear even today or after today will sense of your anointing. Yes. That those who do not know you, O oh God, will come to know you, whom to know as life eternal. Yes. I pray for the one that will deliver your word this morning, O oh God. Father God, I pray that you'll touch him from the front of his head to the very soul of his feet. That he will step back and allow you to speak to and through him. That the message that you give, that you have given to him, O oh Father God, will blast the earways. And that men and women, boys and girls, will come to trust you. And to know that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father God, like the children of Israel, we've strayed, O oh God. We've God wandered away from you in such form and fashion, O oh God, that sometimes we find ourselves in situations and then we have to remember, O oh God, that you are a Father, that we have no need to fear, that you have not given us the spirit of fear, O oh Father God, but that you've given us, O oh God. <laughs> a mind of Christ Jesus, O oh Lord God. That you have not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of love and power and of sound mind. Father God, it's in you and you alone. We live and breathe and have our being. So in spite of what's going on around us, our ankle holds, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We know in whom we believe. Yes. And we know that he is more than able to see us through. Thank you, Father. So, Father God, this morning, I just place everything in your hands. We step back and we ask you to lead. For we know that what you do is well done. Have your way among us this morning, O oh God. And may your people be blessed and may your name be praised and glorified as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Take full control now, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the Citadel Worship Hour. On behalf of Reverend Dr. Floyd Antonio, his wife Rosalie Antonio, Deacon Oliver Thompson, who will bring a special word from God today, and members of the wider Citadel family, we are glad you could join us. Remember, tell someone to join in. Call a friend, a relative, a neighbor. Because surely you are not here by chance today. May you be blessed. May you be encouraged as we go through this service. We thank God for taking us through the past week. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Yes. Elevate and occupy our worship. Saturate our space wherever we are right now in the listening, viewing, and participating aspects of this broadcast. Engulf us with thy presence. Amen. Join with us this morning as we sing to the Lord a new song, as we worship and adore Him, because we know that as the praises go up, the presence of the Lord will come and rest wherever you are. Amen. And in His presence, there is fullness of joy. Thank you.
and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron, and twenty years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time, and she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah, between Ramah and Bethel, in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kedesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go, and draw toward Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and the children of Zebulun? And I will draw unto thee to the river of Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor, but the Lord shall send Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kedesh. And Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kedesh. And he went up with 10,000 men at his feet, and Deborah went up with him. Now Heber the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of, of Moses, had severed himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent onto the plain of Zanim, which is by Kedesh. And they showed to Sarah that Barak the son of Abinoam was gone up to Mount Tabor. And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him, from Harasheth to of the Gentiles, unto the river Kishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak <clears throat> went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. And the Lord discomfited Sisera and all his chariots and all his host with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. Sixteenth and last. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the host unto Harasheth of the Gentiles, and all the hosts of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left. Mm -hmm. Here endeth the reading of the Lord. Mm -hmm. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Glory be to God. At this point in our worship, we invite you to prepare yourself for the word, which will be presented to us today by our own beloved Deacon Oliver Thompson. And he has a question for you today. So as that is addressed, I ask you to keep your pens, your papers, your tape recorder, but above all else, listen with the ear of the Spirit. Deacon Thompson. Thank you. Reverend Anthony, and I want to thank the Citadel, thank Sister Rosie, my wife who read it so beautifully, and I also want to thank Sister Bernice for praying for us. Today is a special day, and God is going to intervene in our lives. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for everything. We thank you for this glorious day. God, as you prepare our hearts to give you thanks and praise, we pray 
that you will intervene and that souls will be born for your kingdom. Grant us peace and love in thy name we pray. Amen. 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 The passage that was read, and I'd like you to keep your Bibles wide open, and I'd like for you to pay attention to verse 8, verses 8 and 9. The passage that was read reminds us that when you walk away from God, there is a heavy price to be paid. It also reminds us that through repentance, prayer and supplication, he will hear your cry and answer. Our text for meditation is, which side are you on? Which side are you on? Verse 8 said, But Barak answered her, If you come with me, I will go. If you do not come with me, I will not go. I will certainly go with you, she replied. Yehuda was sent by God to deliver the children of Israel from the Moabites who had oppressed them for 18 long years. Under his leadership, Israel prospered spiritually and otherwise. He was dead hoping the gateway to sin and idol worship among his people. A new generation arose who did not know the Lord. They did not have a personal walk with the Lord. They did not care about him. They turned away from God to serve idols. We are reminded of the first commandment. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The Lord was angry because of their actions. As a consequence, the Lord sent oppressors to oppress his people as a response to their unfaithfulness. We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord. We have sinned because we have left things undone which we ought to have done. The things we promised God to do in obedience to his word in the days of our conviction. For 20 long years, my brothers and sisters, Israel cried out for deliverance from under the hand of King Jabin, king of Canaan. With an army of 900 iron chariots, they were well established in military technology. Israel had none but their faith in God. Which side are you on? Like Daniel who was cast into the lion's den, which side are you on? Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in the fiery furnace when they refused to bow to idols. Which side are you on? Whatever your situation, whatever your circumstances, do not give up. As Moses told the children of Israel in Exodus 14, verse 14, the Lord will fight for you and he shall hold your peace. Verse 6 of Judges 4 reminds us that God is an untimed God and he will respond to your call in due time. Do not give up or give in. The prophetess Deborah, one instructed in divine knowledge by the Spirit of God, called Barak and directed him to raise an army to take on Jabin and his men. God was saying, enough is enough. Yes. I have heard your cry, my people. I have seen your suffering. I felt your pain, my people. 
it is time to be delivered. It is felt that there was some amount of reluctance coming from Barak, knowing that the strength of the Syrian army was the best. But which side are you on, my brothers and sisters? Verse 8 of Judges 4, Barak said, If you will go with me, then I will go. Deborah's immediate reply was, I will surely go. As Christians, we must be prepared to assist others. We must be prepared to go the extra mile. We must be prepared to strengthen the weak against the enemy. It is a fair assessment to say that as Christians and non-Christians alike are faced with difficulties and are in, in need of support. The pastors, the deacons, the officers, and members and non-Christians alike are faced with the same situation. The songwriter says, no man is an island, no man stands alone. End of quote. We all need to be on the right side of God's grace. Which side are you on? Barak was now in a better frame of mind. He was ready to fight because the prophetess was there with him. My brothers and sisters, Barak exercised great faith. The book of Hebrew chapter 11, 1 to 3, summarizes what true Bible faith is. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. It is your conviction that will see you through any difficulty. It was with this conviction the Israelites went up against an army that was far more superior in strength and numbers. Faith is to a Christian what a foundation is to a house. It gives confidence and assurance yes. that he will stand even in times of turbulence. Amen. As Barak gathered his troops together, 10,000 men, no chariots along with Deborah, ready to launch the attack their secret weapon faith in god oh yes barak and deborah were on a rescue mission for the lord to free the defenseless israelites they were on a mission to protect and restore god's legacy one can just imagine the tense situation that existed then as the armies prepared to do battle at the river Kishon. General H. Norman Schwaschkoff of the U.S. Army in his book, It Doesn't Take a Hero, recounts event as he prepared to launch a multinational force against the Iraqis in 1991. Torn by the thoughts of war and the pride of nationalism, he penned this letter. My dearest wife and children. Glory. The war clouds have gathered on the horizon. And I have already issued the terrible orders that will let the monster loose. I wish with every fiber of my body that I would never had to issue those commands. But it is now too late, and for whatever purpose God has, we will soon be at war. As a soldier who has had to go to war three times before, I want you to know that I'm not afraid. I know that I might face death. But you know what? 
that I'm far safer than most of the fine men and women under my command. Some will die. Many could die. I pray to God that this will not happen. But if it does, and I'm one of those chosen by God to sacrifice my life, I want you to know that my last thoughts before this terrible beginning are for you and my beloved family. Take care of each other. Love each other. And if it be God's will, we shall be together soon. If that should not happen, then know that whatever I am, so wherever I am, I will be with each of you every day, always. Signed, Norman H. Shoshkov. Following what we know as Operation Desert Storm, a war that lasted only 100 hours, the multinational forces were victorious and casualties were minimal on their side. Under the leadership of General Shoshkov, they prepared themselves to defeat the enemy. Jabin prepared himself well to defeat the enemy, the Israelites. The Israelites prepared themselves through their faith in God to go against Jabin. God answer their prayers. Jabin might have thought that the odds were in favor because of the might of his army, but that night God intervened. Heavy rain fell before the start of the battle and caused the ground to be fully saturated. So much so, that the wheels of Jabin's iron chariots became stuck in the mud and their mighty army was left defenseless and at the mercy of the Israelites who slaughtered every one of them. On the side of God, the impossible was made possible. He will deliver you if you put your trust in him. It is possible that Satan is aware of our directives from God and has tried in so many times, in so many ways to divert our attention to prevent us from fulfilling God's mission. Yes. Yes, Satan wants to defeat us, but he cannot when you are on the side of God. Yes. Amen. One noted Prime Minister of yesteryear used the phrase full hundred as a political slogan. Today I am saying to you all, give God 100. Give God full hundred because he is a jealous God. Depressed as you are, tired as you are, weak as you are, Poor as you are, give God the glory. Give him 100% of yourself at all times. Yes, yes. Which side are you on? Cry unto the Lord for help. He will answer you at the appointed time and place. For 20 long years, the Canaanite King Jabin oppressed the children of Israel with iron fists and iron chariots. Fear gripped the defenseless Israelites because of their sinful behavior. For 20 long years, they worshiped false gods. For 20 long years, they intermarried with the Canaanites, meaning they were unequally yoked. For 20 long years, they did what was right in their sight and not in the sight of God. For 20 long years, the Israelites were in trouble because of sin, and it was impossible to launch a rescue mission for them. Mm. Mm. But wait, nothing is impossible for God, 
and nothing is impossible for you when he is on your side. If you believe that you are not on God's side, it is time to make the change. It matters not who you are because God will provide for you. In the darkest night, there's a light at the end of the tunnel for you and for me. There was a light at the end of the tunnel for Jonah when the Lord sent a whale in the middle of the ocean. Jonah was swallowed up by the whale and survived to carry out God's will to warn a nation. The nation, the wicked nation of Nineveh was saved because they heeded the warning. My brothers and sisters, there is a light at the end of the tunnel for Moses, the Hebrew, when the Lord provided Pharaoh's daughter who became his surrogate mother. Moses later led the children of Israel who were in bondage to Pharaoh out of Egypt. Pharaoh went back on his word to free the children of Israel after suffering 10 plagues from God. Instead, he pursued Moses and the children of Israel into the Red Sea, where it is felt he perished along with his army. God delivered the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. There was a light at the end of the tunnel for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. When they were sent to the fiery furnace and were rescued by God, there was a light at the end of the tunnel for the Israelites when the Lord provided Deborah and Barak who led the assault on King Jabin and rescued the Israelites. There is a light at the end of the tunnel for you and for me if you put your trust in God. If you are outside of Christ, you need to make that change. As for the Christians, you have experienced many difficulties, dark tunnels in your lives already over the years and God has seen you through. Your dark tunnels may not yet be over, but hold fast to your faith and in God. You cannot be defeated unless you have given up hope and trust in the Lord. You cannot be defeated unless you have given up your confidence in his promise. Yes. Yes. You cannot be defeated unless you have lost faith in what the power of the Lord Jesus Christ can do. Yes. Matthew 14, 25, 31 tells a story of Peter walking on the sea. He had his eyes fixed on Jesus. But when his faith wavered, Peter began to sink. Mm -hmm. You see, brothers and sisters, as long as Peter's eyes were on Jesus, he was okay. Yes, yes. In other words, when Peter began to lean on his own understanding, he began to go under. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in Christ Jesus. Amen. He will calm the storms of life. Yes. He will give you peace in the midst of your storm. Amen. The battle is not yours. It is mine, said the Lord. Amen. Which side are you on, my brothers and sisters? To so Sarah, command of King Jabin's guard, who escaped on foot, when Jabin's army was defeated by the Israelite, was chased by Barak, and he sought refuge in a tent, but was later slain by a woman with a nail to his temple whilst he slept. In verse 22 of Judges 4, you can read. King Jabin also perished. Once again, God came through for his people, just like Deborah prophesied. As children of God, 
You can all only celebrate God's victory in your life if you are on his side. Amen. Amen. Which side are you on, my brothers and sisters? In your own strength, we are utterly helpless to face the powerful Canaanite army. Wherever it is, or whoever it is. In fact, true victory in spiritual warfare demand that we acknowledge our helplessness and our weakness. God has given us three specific steps that enable us to be conquerors. One, lay hold of the complete protection of Christ through the word of God and prayer. Two, pray Pray as you put on the armor. When you are fully armed, pray as you stand in the face of Satan's attack. Stand firm in your faith, knowing the battle is the Lord. Our faith is his victory. A victory that was accomplished on the cross at Calvary. Hallelujah. No battle has ever been won without faith. No battle has ever been won without faith, courage, and perseverance. Yes, yes. This is the challenge before us today. And in closing, I quote from the late Martin Luther King's sermon, he said, God is the God of justice who punish Israel for their wayward deeds. And on the other hand, he is a forgiving father whose heart is filled with joy. Brothers and sisters, if you're away, it is time to get back to the Lord. Yes. And the big question is, which side are you on? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Amen.
that are set up against us. Amen. God has given us that as a weapon of war. We thank you. Thank Deacon Thompson this morning for being obedient to the Lord and um, just bringing the word this morning. And we're going to be here at the, on behalf of the Citadel members and the leaders. We're so glad that you joined with us live on Facebook this morning. Um, so glad for those who will be joining us later um, as we send the, the video out uh, on YouTube. And uh, if you want to know anything more about the Citadel or website, on our website you can find a telephone number, you can find an email or um, address. Um, feel free to email us with your prayer request because we are here again on Tuesday evening um, at 7.30. And as you send the prayer requests in, we'll be joining in faith with you as well. Our website, www.thecitadelhq.com, and you can find all the information there. And I know Dr. Ford Antonio just wants to say a word before we close off, but, but we're so grateful to God. Don't let that word that was spoken this morning, you know, disappear from your head. Spend some time and meditate over it. We know that God is here for us so that we can be victorious. He didn't create us to be losers. He created us to be winners. See? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much, Deacon Thompson, for your obedience and to your dear wife for her constant support. Thanks also to Sister Bernice who prayed that very moving prayer. And to my darling wife. And to all the members of the Citadel, I know you are connected and you're praying. I just praise the Lord for what He's doing. I heard a word in my spirit, which I must tell you. This word that you got, Deacon Thompson and I did not discuss the message, nothing like that. But the Lord wants me to remind you that these are serious times. And it's going to get worse before it gets better. He wants us to tell you, to prepare you, not to scare you. Troubling times, troublesome times are ahead. And it's going to get even more serious. So don't be frightened. Pick a side. Choose a side. The side that you choose will determine whether you win or lose. The side you choose will determine whether you win or lose. So if you have not yet accepted Christ as your Savior and Lord, ask Him no. Pray in your own words. Say, Lord, come into my heart, my mind, my soul, my spirit. I'm accepting your Son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. Save me. Forgive me of my trespasses. I am going to put all my faith in you and trust you. I am praying to you today. I don't know much. I don't know enough. But I've heard enough to know that if there is a God, it must be you. And I want Thank to you. serve you. So I'm giving my life to you today in Jesus' name. And if you do that, God will lead you through his Holy Spirit as you take the steps in his word. Hallelujah. 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 Don't look to men. Put not your confidence in man. Not even a pastor, not even a president or a prime minister. Put your trust in God. Hope thou in God. And before I go today, I just want to offer some congratulations to my friends over there in the UK. Dennis Skip Ernach and his wife Joan. And the more specifically to their son David, who took unto himself a beautiful wife, Elena, yesterday, they had a lovely ceremony. I was there in spirit. Congratulations to all of you. And the Lord will bless you because you have done the right thing all the way up to this point. Congratulations. Congratulations also to my brother who grew up with me almost like a father, I should say. He's over there in the British Virgin Island. He also got married uh, on... 
the Independence Day almost for Jamaica. And so Orville Clark and uh, Jocelyn Clark, congratulations, my brother. You have done the right thing. All my mother's sons are now officially married. And he's trusting in the Lord. That's also fantastic. So congratulations. And if you were born in the month of August, Happy birthday to you particularly. My sister celebrated her birthday yesterday, my baby sister Paulette. And if you know anybody who celebrated an, uh, an anniversary, Deacon, you have an anniversary coming up, I think? Coming Late, up. Yes. Later on this month, is it? Yes, coming up. Yes. The, the 20th? Yes. Y yes, well, well, congratulations and happy anniversary when it comes. Call up somebody if you know they have a birthday. Or just call them up to say hi. These are times when some people are following the rules and are staying put. But a phone call is always welcome. Thank you again for being a part of the Citadel. My friends from school days, from college days, whether JSM or Church Teachers College or high school or the other institutions that have taught. I know you're online, you've been connecting with us and you've been sharing what God has been doing. So many of you all over the world, the Lord is with us, the God of Jacob, is our refuge so if you have chosen the god of jacob stay with him if you have not made that choice do it now god bless you shalom